Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to take astrophotography images just like this. To do astrophotography, you're going to need a camera, a lens, a tripod, and somewhere dark away from any light pollution. It's also helpful if you have a headlamp or flashlight of some kind so you can see your camera buttons and composition in the dark. So there's a lot more to astrophotography that I'm able to explain in this short video, but I'm gonna keep this as short, concise, and fast as possible. The first step is to find a location. I usually use Google Maps for location scouting. Then I use an app called PhotoPills to see the moon phase, position of the Milky Way, and the perfect time to shoot it. After I've found a location, I check the light pollution map to see if it's a dark enough place to go. The darker it is, the more visible the Milky Way will be, and the more detail you'll be able to pull out of it. Lastly, I check the weather and cloud cover for the night I want to shoot. You want it to be as clear as night as possible. I aim for 15% or less cloud. The lower, the better. Now it's time to head out. So here we are out on location, it's dark, and I know exactly where the Milky Way is going to be thanks to my prior planning. So I've lined it up, I knew exactly what time it was gonna be in the position I wanted it to be. So here we are and we're ready to shoot. Start by opening your lens's aperture as wide open as it will go. For this lens, that will be f2.8. If you have a lens that doesn't open as wide as this, that's okay, just set it to the minimum you can. Lenses that can open wider do have an advantage with astrophotography. Next, we'll use what's called an NPF calculator to find the best shutter speed. Too long and the stars will start to trail due to the movement of the Earth. Too short and the stars and Milky Way will not show up. I use the NPF calculator in photo pills, but there are plenty of free ones online. Put in your camera details and it will give you a recommended shutter speed. For me, it has given a recommended shutter speed of somewhere between 7 and 14 seconds. So I'm going to go somewhere in between at 10 seconds. Lastly, you'll have to set your ISO. Every camera is going to be different here, so I suggest starting at around 3200. And if your image isn't bright enough, keep increasing the ISO until it's looking good. All right, so we have our settings dialed in. I've got a 10 second shutter speed shooting at f2.8 and my ISO is 3200. Now we're gonna focus on the stars. Make sure your camera is set to manual focus. Zoom in on the screen and move your focus wheel until the stars are as small a point as possible. All right, so to get the best possible results, we're gonna be doing what we call stacking, and that's when we take multiple images and we stack them up in some software later, which will help to remove a lot of the noise and allow us to bring out a lot more of the detail in the Milky Way. So to begin with, you can take about 20 images in your stack. The more you take, the better, but there is a limit that you get to where you don't really get that much more of a better result. So I'm gonna take about 40 or 50. I'm using an intervalometer to do that. This camera here doesn't have one built in, but some of them do. And I've just set this to take 50 images and it's gonna take them, take an image every 12 seconds. The reason I have 12 seconds and my shutter is 10 is that extra two seconds just gives the camera a little more time to save the images and just get ready to take the next one. So we're gonna take those 50 images right now. All right, so now that's done, we're gonna put our lens cap on and I'm gonna do the exact same thing, leave the settings exactly as they are, but instead of taking 50 images, I'm gonna take 20. Now you might think it's crazy as to why you would leave the lens cap on to take photos, but it helps to remove a lot of the sensor noise your camera might have, and they're called dark frames, and it's basically to help, yeah, remove a lot of the sensor noise and also to uh, remove a lot of the hot pixels that your sensor might have. So 20 with the lens cap on after you've taken the 40 or 50, whatever it is, with your lens cap off. So that's it for the shooting side of things. Let's head back home and get this edited. I'm now going to stack these images in some free software called Sequator. I will load in my 50 normal star images and my 20 lens cap on images. These are called dark frames. Once that processes, I'll be left with a TIFF file that I can then edit using Photoshop. Now I complete the editing of my image using Photoshop. This is a process of increasing the exposure, contrast, and other settings to bring out the details of the Milky Way. It gets a whole lot more in depth than this, and I'm trying to keep this video as short and to the point as possible. So if you want an extremely detailed lesson on this whole process, I highly recommend you check out my photography course. The link will be in the description below. 
The course is very affordable and will teach you almost every single aspect of photography, including very detailed lessons on astrophotography planning, shooting and editing. And this right here is the final image. I hope you enjoyed and learnt something. I know I may not have covered every single detail in this video, but I wanted to keep it as short and concise as possible. Thank you for watching.